When it comes to infinite series, the big question is convergence. For a given series, we want to know does this series converge, meaning does it add up to a finite value, or does it diverge, meaning does it add up to an infinite value. So we're going to develop a list of tests that we can apply to different series to see whether or not they converge. And this kind of is similar to the process for integration, where for a given integral, one method applies and another doesn't. The same thing is true here. For a given series, one test may be useful and another may not tell us anything or may be too hard to conduct. So we'll have to have a little bit of experience picking which test to use, and then we'll have to know how to run each test and interpret the results and see if it's convergent or divergent. So we're going to start with one relatively simple test that's called the divergence test. It also might be called the nth term test sometimes, or the kth term test. But I'll use the term divergence test here. So for this test, we can think of a couple examples that we've seen. We've seen the example of the series 1 over 2 to the k. We started with this one talking about Zeno's paradox. We also looked at it as an example of a geometric series. And however we looked at it, we always found that it converged. And we observed here for the first time that an infinite series could converge if those terms get small enough fast enough. But then as a counterexample, we had the harmonic series, 1 over k. And this one diverges. Before we knew that it diverged though, we observed that still the terms get smaller as you go. It's just that there's some subtle point at which they're not decreasing fast enough, roughly speaking, so it doesn't have a chance to converge. But we noticed in both cases the terms were getting smaller, so there was a hope of it converging. On the other hand, something like the series from k equals 1 to infinity of 2, which would just be the series 2 plus 2 plus 2 forever, that would certainly diverge. We don't even have to do any fancy tests to recognize that if we're just adding a finite value over and over again without this decreasing value in the terms, there's no chance that it converges. So informally, the divergence test basically says before we do anything else, we know that the terms have to be getting smaller in order to have any hope of converging. Notice that just because the terms are getting smaller isn't enough to confirm that it converges but if they're not getting smaller, we know for sure that it can't converge. So it's a necessary condition, but it's not a sufficient condition. Just knowing that the terms are getting smaller doesn't actually tell us that it converges, but if it doesn't pass this test, we know for sure that it diverges. So when I use the term get smaller here, what I really mean by that is that the terms are approaching zero. And that's gonna be important as we write this test down in slightly more precise terminology. So the divergence test can never conclude that a series converges. All it can do is filter out some series that will diverge. So it can catch really obviously diverging ones, but everything that passes the divergence test could diverge or converge. We don't know. We just know that some things might fail this test. So it's a easy filter to apply at the beginning of the process to just catch series that fairly clearly diverge. So it's a good thing to apply at first just to see if you can catch a divergent series fairly early on. So to test that the terms approach zero, let me write it this way. So for example, taking the series 
1 over 2 to the k, the terms of the series are given by this form 1 over 2k. So we might use a sub k to represent a general term in this series. So when k equals 1, we'd have 1 half. When k equals 2, we'd have 1 fourth and so on. So 1 over 2 to the k is the general form of the terms of the series. Or you might think of the underlying sequence that builds up to this series when you add them all together. And what we're looking for is that as we go further down the list, in other words, as we take a limit as k approaches infinity, we want to see that this 1 over 2 to the k approaches 0, which it does. And you can just apply what we learned about limits back in Calc 1. That's a relatively simple limit because as k goes to infinity, 2 to the k also approaches infinity. And since it's the denominator with a constant numerator, that all goes to 0 and vanishes. Similarly, we could do the same thing for the harmonic series. We could take the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over k. Again, that equals 0. So both of these series pass the divergence test, which doesn't tell us whether they converge or not. We just know that they haven't failed to converge dramatically according to this test. So as we know, one of them converges and one diverges. So formally, if we write down what the divergence test looks like, if the limit as k goes to infinity of that formula for the terms of the series, if this limit is not zero, then we know for sure that this series diverges. And that's all that the test claims. This test makes no claim about what happens if the limit is zero. In that case, we don't know whether it converges or diverges. But if the limit comes out to not being zero, then we know for sure that it diverges. The example I gave above of the series two plus two plus two plus two, that limit of two as k goes to infinity is two or not zero. So that one clearly diverges according to the divergence test. And we can do a few more examples with this. For example, if we have the series 2k squared plus 3k plus 1 divided by 5k squared minus 6, you can think about how to do this limit. And if you remember back to calc 1, or even in pre-calculus when you saw something like this, with the equal powers of k on the top and the bottom, the limit is going to simply be this ratio of leading coefficients. So this limit comes out to be 2 fifths, which is of course not equal to zero. So this one diverges. According to the divergence test. So we know for sure that one diverges. For another example, we could have the series from k equals 1 to infinity of sine of k. And we can think about what this limit would be as k goes to infinity. Think about what the limit of the sine function does as k goes to infinity. In other words, as you move to the right along this sine wave, what happens to those values? Do they ever settle down to anything? And the answer is they don't. So this limit does not exist. So since that limit does not exist, it can equal zero, which means that this series also diverges according to the divergence test. And then for one more example, we could do something like one over k squared. And again, taking the limit as k goes to infinity of one over k squared, that does equal zero. And so be careful here, that doesn't mean that this series converges, that just means that this test is inconclusive. 
So if you're given a series and asked to test whether it converges or diverges, one good thing to do at first is just to apply the divergence test because it's pretty quick and easy to do and just check and see if the terms go to zero. If they do, that means you need to go on and do some other work to figure out whether it converges or diverges. But for a few of them, you'll get something that doesn't equal zero. And so you can stop right there and say, this one diverges, we know right away it failed the divergence test. So be careful that you don't ever do the divergence test and then claim that something converged because the divergence test can't come to that conclusion. But if you happen to find that the terms don't go to zero, then you know that it diverges according to the divergence test.